Starting off the news this week, satellite data has shown that a forested area of around a hectare, or the size of a football pitch, is being removed every minute from the Amazon rainforest. The recent acceleration of deforestation has been attributed to the new president of Brazil who encourages higher development rather than conservation. An anonymous senior Brazilian official told the BBC that his government was encouraging deforestation. The Amazon rainforest is the largest rainforest on the planet and is an exceedingly important tool to help slow down global warming. In other news, NASA has announced its plan to build a $1 billion drone to send to Titan, Saturn's biggest moon. The main mission for this drone, named Dragonfly, is to search for evidence to support the ability of Titan to host life, and it will be visiting key sites to test the chemistry of Titan, and will hopefully find samples that support the idea that life could indeed start on another body. Titan has an atmosphere far thicker than that of Earth's, and Dragonfly will try to use that to its advantage to fly around the moon. The Dragonfly mission is part of NASA's New Frontiers program. And in paleontology news this week, a very exciting discovery has been announced of the bones of a giant bird species that lived in the lower Pleistocene of the North Black Sea area. The animal these bones belong to is called Pachystruthio demanisensis, and this organism was huge, three times larger than an ostrich, and comparable in size to the extinct elephant birds and moa. The body mass of this animal has been estimated at 450 kilograms, and it therefore was one of the most massive of all known avians. No birds of this size have been found in the northern hemisphere before, and it seems as though Pachystruthio was a good runner, and it probably would have coexisted with the Homo genus when they first arrived in the region. Also this week, an interesting study on the repeated evolution of herbivory in crocodiliforms has been published. It explains how crocodiliforms during the Mesozoic show a wide range of different morphologies in their skeletons, and unusual teeth actually evolve in groups of these animals on several different occasions. The study demonstrates how in the past, these organisms filled far more niches than their modern day relatives do, including becoming omnivorous and even herbivorous. It also shows that they developed complex dentitions at least three different times, actually evolving teeth about as complex as today's herbivorous mammals. So, herbivorous crocodiliforms were in fact much more common than they had been previously realised, and were present throughout a lot of the Mesozoic era. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to learn more about this world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds you. And if you have, we'll see you on Sunday.